Mr. Gantas, Chairman. Friends, come with me to ancient Greece, where once upon a time there lived a gifted sculptor named Pygmalion. With his mallet and chisel, he created the most wondrous form, the statue of a woman. So lifelike, so enchanting, so beautiful was it that he fell in love with his creation. He talked to it, cared for it as if it were a living being. Finally, the goddess of love answered his prayers. His belief, his intense loving brought her to life. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you know this story? Great! How many of you believe this can happen? You're right! We have a natural tendency to respond to others' belief in us. Social psychologists call this the Pygmalion Effect. When we expect the best of others, we empower them to do their best. Think, who helped you become what you are today? Who believed you had more potential than you gave yourself credit for? Their name may not have been Pygmalion, but the effect is the same. There are Pygmalions in management, as the Harvard Business Review tells us. If a manager thinks, I've got a super special team, his people outperform themselves. There are Pygmalions in the classroom, as research shows. When teachers were led to believe that some students were brighter than the rest, subconsciously, they paid more attention to these students, helped them more, encouraged them. So that even when these children were no brighter than the rest, they did achieve more. My daughter's an example. One day she came home from school and I said, Hi, honey, how are your new teachers? They're okay, mommy. They don't have favorites. That's good. No, mommy. If they did, I'd be their favorite. And I'd do better than all the rest. I was taken aback. At nine years old, she had already discovered that teachers' attentions made her feel special. So she performed. No wonder little children and big children do all kinds of good things and bad to gain attention. They seem to be saying, please discover me, touch me, Believe in me, and I will bloom before your eyes. I will perform beyond your expectations. It is said that behind every successful man is a woman and a surprised mother-in-law. I say, Behind every successful person is a mentor, a Pygmalion. What would Helen Keller, totally blind, deaf, have achieved without her teacher, the miracle worker Anne Sullivan? Would Eliza Doolittle, Cockney flower girl, have become my fair lady without Professor Higgins? The difference between the lady and the cockney flower girl, as Eliza puts it, it ain't how she behaves, it is how she is treated. What a pity, not everyone is Pygmalion unto another. Some people throw cold water on our fires with their doubts, their cynicism. If you say, that turkey, he'll never make it, he probably won't. 
You have destined him for failure. Put downs are little murders. They shrivel the soul. How can we best use the Pygmalion effect? We can expect the best of one another. When my son graduated from high school, he was so disappointed. His dancing partner twisted her ankle and could not compete with him at the school's dance contest. I'll still compete in the contest, he said, with my mom. <laughs> He's got to dance with his mommy. But my son believed he could teach me quickly. We twisted and twirled, shimmied and shook. Wow, the men won! Congratulations! How did you do it? It was easy, I said. You don't have to be a Ginger Rogers to dance like a star when your partner is a Fred Astaire. <laughs> Encouragement, caring can transform a garden variety mortal into an inspired achiever. And when we help others achieve, we also succeed. Therefore, take this, the chisel of encouragement. Use it. Chisel away at the blocks of shyness, self-doubts, fear, Blocks to reaching great heights. We may not have the skills to create magnificent sculptures, but we can bring forth the best in people when we believe in them and help them shatter those blocks. Then spark the inner light with love. Coax the genius to come out and they will shine before our eyes. They will exceed our expectations and we will be Pygmalion!